Hi guys, I'm Azar Khan and welcome to another video. In this Rhino tutorial, we're going to cover an amazing project by Allied Works, the Clifford Still Museum. And I'm going to show you how to use blocks to make the entire ceiling in one go. If you want to follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right guys, so let's begin. And you can see over here, this is the ceiling when you're inside the museum. And it's this concrete ceiling that has almost like these barrel vaults, these mini vaults with these holes in them. And they kind of go at an angle across the room. And if you zoom into what they actually look like, this is what they look like. So here you see, it's almost like a thick band. And then you have a vault, right? Like a little barrel being taken out almost like a size of a soda can almost and then you have this ellipse that kind of cuts through it let's see if there's any other images here's a good one uh, where you're seeing almost like a construction photo of ceiling and you can see that here there is like this mold you see so this is really like the negative we need to create to cut out of the ceiling to get this positive that's left behind so let's go into Rhino and figure out how to do this so here's a base model of the Clifford Still Museum that I've been working on and now it's time to model the ceiling and I'm gonna do that over here on the side and if I go in my top view and just look at this rectangle that I need to populate. The first thing I want to do is kind of just set out my problem over here. So I'm going to draw a line that's over here. And using this curve, I'm just going to array this in the X direction. So just going sideways, left to right. And how many do I need? I have no idea. I'm just going to type in 200 and in the Y, nothing. And in the Z, nothing. All right. And I'm just going to start moving them and just getting a decent idea of one module, right? I mean, you can obviously do this and make it extremely accurate. I'm just doing this for tutorial purposes, so we're going kind of quickly. But let's just say that's my ceiling module over here. And you'll also notice that there is a angle to this, right? Like it's not just a perfect grid. There's actually an angle uh, going on over here. So you'll see that the ceiling members, this is going in one direction and this is not going in 90 degrees. It's going up in an angle. Let's say it's 30 degrees. So I want also a line here that's at 30 degrees. Now what, how you can do that is by clicking on line and you see there's a bunch of options up, up here. You can see one's called angled. So if I just click here and then type in, uh, let's say it goes to there and pivot angle is 30 degrees. It's going to give me a line at 30 degrees that I can use to just draw a line across. So I know this is at the right angle. I can uh, bring this maybe down here somewhere and do the same thing, right? Like array this upwards. So X direction is one, uh, Y direction, let's try, try 200 again, and Z direction one again. Let's see what this looks like. And again, I'm just gonna kind of estimate it visually what it would be and hit enter. And yeah, that's pretty much good enough for me right now. I'm not actually going to use these lines to create the geometry, right? Like these lines will never be extruded or anything. I'm just using them as a base to figure out what one module looks like. So now that's really the important part is that if you tried to model this entire roof, your model would get extremely heavy in size. You wouldn't be able to share it with anyone. So what you want to use is blocks. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how to use blocks over here. So let me make a layer. Uh, and let's call this base block. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I go ahead, zoom in on one of these guys and start to outline what it is. So one of these modules like this, then take that curve and extrude it. And again, all I'm doing is just eyeballing this, right? None of this is extremely accurate. Just kind of eyeballing it to about there, maybe a little bit lower, let's say there, okay? Once you have this, if I started to array this on this um, on this entire grid over here, it's going to make my vial extremely heavy. So what I want to do is new layer and call this ceiling blocks. All right. And make that the active layer, then select this guy and type in the word block. When you do that, it's going to ask for a base point. I'm going to select one of the corners. It doesn't really matter which one. Select one of these corners and I'm going to call this uh, ceiling module. 
Now this is a block, right? Notice that if I click on it, it says one block instance selected. I'm gonna copy this over. And the great thing about using blocks is when I copy a block, Rhino is not creating new geometry, right? It's just copying the existing geometry over as a reference. And that's how you build your ceiling. So according to Rhino, this is not 10 blocks. This is just one block and it only needs to remember one because anything I do to this block, it's gonna do to the others you what I mean if I copy this block over double click it okay and when I double click it it goes into the editing mode notice how everything else turns gray except for what I double clicked now if I click on this and stretch it a little bit and then click OK it's gonna do that to everyone else you see this is the great advantage of using blocks is that you make a change to one and it makes a change to every copy of that block in your model I'm gonna undo that of course and now I'm gonna go back in and this time I'm going to start carving out some of that geometry, right? So let's say I wanted to do that um, barrel uh, that we had in there. So what I'm going to do is create a line, okay, that goes from the middle of this block to the other side of this block. And I'm just going to extend that line out. So if I scale, uh, you can just scale this block line way out here. And the advantage of doing that now is that I can make this a pipe, okay? So I can make this a pipe and it's going to ask me like, hey, how wide do you want it? I really don't know how wide yet. I'm just messing around. So let me say uh, about that size, enter, enter, enter. And now I have this pipe that's cutting my block. And what I can do now that I have this pipe is do a Boolean split. So I'm going to split this block, hit enter with this cylinder, hit enter. And what Boolean split does is that it keeps all the parts. So this guy, if I move it on the side now, you'll notice that it carved out this piece, but it kept this guy, right? Which is okay. I mean, the reason I do this is because if I need this later, I can always keep it. But right now I'm looking at it, it looks all right. I'm just gonna take this and delete it. And I don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna delete this as well and click okay. And look what it does. It does the same thing to the rest of them, right? Isn't that great? So all I had to do was mess with one and it messes with the rest. Now I also need to slice an ellipse out. So again, whenever you do this, make sure you're not cutting this with the ellipse, but rather you double click, go into the block, and it's this that you're editing in the block editor. I'm gonna to go to my top view, and now I need to draw an ellipse. So we know how to do that by going to the ellipse command, and there's a couple of options over here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go maybe this way, and you can choose whatever shape you want but I'm just gonna choose something that kinda of goes against the grain, so to speak, right there. And this I'm gonna use another command. Uh, instead of extruding this and using the Boolean command, I'm actually gonna use the make uh, whole command. So if you type in M-A-K-E-H-O-L-E, -E, make whole, first it'll ask you, select some closed curves that you wanna cut the hole with. So I'm gonna select the ellipse, then you hit enter. Then it says select the surface that you want the hole to be in, and I'm gonna select our block. The next thing it's gonna do is say, hey, how deep do you want this hole? Because in Rhino, you can actually select whether you just want it to go in a little bit or through all the way. If you want this hole to cut all the way through, look over here, it says press enter to cut through the object. So I don't have to actually do any measurements here. I just hit enter, and it's gonna cut through the object. And there we go, now I have that hole. If I click OK, it will apply it to the rest of the geometries here. Notice that it also copies everything else. So not only uh, on this block, say I copy this block over, you'll notice that not only did it have this solid, but also keeps that line and keeps the ellipse. Okay, so if you don't want the line or the ellipse, again, you don't have to go back to this original one that we've been editing. You can go to any block, double click it, go in, delete that ellipse, delete that line, click OK, and it will adapt everyone else. This is another great thing about using blocks is that you make a change to any one of them and it will affect all of them. So essentially, that's how I built the ceiling is that you just go ahead and start modeling the blocks, start carving them out, and then just looking at them in different perspectives and seeing, okay, is that the right amount? Should I make this thinner? Do I need to make the arch a little bit different? And soon you'll actually have the entire ceiling, which I can show you here that I've modeled. So if I come back here and let's see where's ceiling right here. If I check that on, there we go. That's the that I've modeled. If I place myself in 
uh, the model here. So first thing I'm going to do is make my perspective a little bit wider so I can see a little bit more and then just go inside of the model here like that, go in a nice rendered view. And there we go. Now you can see what the actual finished product looks like by using blocks. And again, if I want to make any modifications, all I have to do like one of them. And again, this makes your file size a lot smaller, so much easier to use. Anytime you have repetitive components like this, please always use blocks. And that's how you make the Clifford still ceiling. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time.